welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy. RJ is off at a rodeo. So, um, yeah. It's one of those days. It's been one of those weeks. Um, we'll start with, oh, well, I guess I'll back up and tell you today is October 7th. Yesterday was RJ's 20th birthday. For those of you who followed him, he started this adventure when he was 13. So you've been following and watching for seven years. A long time. Um, then it is weekly update 153, I think, does that, I am so terrible at, um, figuring out when those are until it's too late. So I think it's 153. As RJ says, it'll be in the title. I know that's not very fair, but hey, it is what it is. Um, and I'm actually trying to find it real quick and can't even find my videos file. Yeah, I'm real coordinated on the computer, aren't I? So, anyway. It'll be in the title. It's like 153. I'm sorry, I just ate. Alright, in the barn stalls. For those of you, those of you who followed last week, um, Storm went to a young man in Louisiana. It happened right on, like, the day before we podcast, but it happened on the weekend. So, um, I'm pretty sure we mentioned it in the last podcast, but we've got some updates. She's doing wonderful. Um, the young man's getting along great with her. Super, super hype, happy. Everything just went amazing on that. So, she is with her forever home. Her... Uh, the young man's grandparents have like a covered arena and stuff. Couldn't ask for a better home. Good Christian family. Um, believe in God winks. He had about three or four other horses they were going to look at. And they canceled the rest of the trip. Took Storm and went home. So he believes it's a perfect horse for his son. We honestly think it's a really, really good match too. So uh, she is in Louisiana still getting updates. But we love her. So um the other thing that happened in the barn stalls is that Star is, she still drills every once in a while, but not like normal, uh, not like she did before. So she, her medication is working. They think she may have a baby tooth she's losing. She's doing fine now. So um, I'm happy with that. She's my girl, my baby. Um, she has been turned out since she got home last week um, just to let her be a horse. She spent 58 days in a pen, and I don't like doing that. So, um, yeah, it's one of those deals. She's out. She's having fun. She's loving it. Um, just getting to be a horse. Uh, she's out on the pasture with Cavayu and Ice. And Precious, Coop, and Durf have been staying up. So, um, uh, Durf is staying up because he's unfixed. And Coop is our rodeo star, so she is with RJ um, today. And then... Precious is what we use to go gather everything. Yeah, so. Um, anyway, calves are doing good. Um, Rosy Red seems a little blah, but um, we've been doctoring her, and she seems to be on the rebound. So she was looking really good today, and I'm really happy with that. Um, Gordy's leg, all of his wounds have healed. I don't think he'll ever walk right on it, but he can get around. He eats grass. He has fun. He, and occasionally he tries to jump and buck. I don't know what his deal is. <laughs> okay, and finally, um, Billy Nelson passed away. Um, he was fine. Like, there was no sign of sickness. There was no sign of anything. He ate. He drank. He played. Um, the only thing that we can gather is he was in the man pen. And, of course, his size was the kind of... of goat he was and we put Gonzo in there so that he wasn't the only goat okay just saying we had some other goats in there so that he'd have a herd and then there was the man sheep um we've not had a problem with it and I don't know that that's what but if they got to headbutting and he hit really stout with something it could have seriously hurt him I, I don't know um he played he ate he drank that morning he was fine went out there that night and he had passed away so we don't know it actually happened yesterday I didn't announce it on, until today on Facebook and that's because 
the people that brought it in, um, we wanted to notify them um, and let them know. I don't like for anybody who originally brought the animal in to see it on Facebook or YouTube before they're told. That to me is just, I'm sorry, it, it's a matter of etiquette. So you're actually hearing about that one the day after and that's because it was a rescue that came in and the original owner it loved him. She just couldn't sell him, couldn't do anything because um, he was improperly castrated. So um, there was reasons why she couldn't keep him. Uh, she lives on the edge of town. He was the only one. It was one of those things. So we took him in and he peacefully passed away. I mean, there was no marks where he thrashed or anything. He just curled up, went to sleep and passed away. So, um, I don't know how old he was either. I didn't even stop to ask. So he may have been four or five years old, which is average for a goat. So especially the dwarfs, I don't know if they live shorter lives or longer lives or don't know. So um, there's that. And then um, I haven't heard any more about the lady who looked at Precious. Um, she is talking to her husband. I know at one point she wanted to trade a horse um, for her. RJ can't afford to trade a horse. He needs to adopt Precious out. So um, we just don't have that kind of, of flexibility at times. And it is what it is. Um, that being said, yeah, we have another horse coming in tomorrow. She, too, is papered. She's a three-year-old. Her feet are horrible, horrible. Um, the people sent her to a trainer, and the trainer brought her back under weight. So now they're fighting with issues. And um, she is either a half-sister or a full cousin to Coop. Um, it is just dependent. We don't know. Um, we never got Cooper's papers, so we don't know how she's bred, but, um, we do have, we were able to maintain or obtain, is the word I'm looking for, the papers on this other horse that's coming in. Um, it is, it's a, what, Doc's OSU Whiskey Gal. I've been calling her Whiskey. Um, she looks a lot like Star. But she has Storm's personality. So um, the one thing I've got to do before she can be ridden, um, RJ can start the groundwork on her, but she has to have her feet trimmed. Um, they are horrible, horrible. She's got a couple of cracks up, which I think um, we should be able to trim out over time. If they go to splitting, I will have to put shoes on her so that it doesn't split further out. Um, on a hoof. Anytime that this part up here, the, the curve of it splits, um, that a, a shoe is actually a tool. We don't shoe all of our horses, um, but we do when they need it. But a shoe will hold that crack. If this was the crack, it would hold it together so that it would grow from the top down. Um, it's like your nails. It grows from the top down, um, from the cornea band down. And it would actually start to grow from the cornea band with no crack. And the shoe would hold it in place. So um, she has a couple of those that we have to address. Um, a lot of jagged edges. So that a lot of them will trim out, but not all. It'll take probably two or three trimmings to get her in shape. Um, she's back up to weight. She's not as, as good as I like them, but she's not underweight either. And she's just a lovely social horse. Um, she was, uh, they brought her out and, you know, we're talking about everything that happened to her and, um, how she's back up to weight and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, the gentleman grew up not too far from here and knows my husband from school. They went to school together. Um, anyway, they were talking about, it, and this horse, RJ's just sitting there with a halter on it, just holding her. And, um. Every time that RJ wouldn't pay attention to her, she'd take her head and like storm and she'd head Buddy's arm or she'd head bust him in the chest like, hey, I'm right here. Don't talk about me. So um, she does have star Storm's personality. 
but um, RJ hasn't started calling her anything yet, and this was instigated by RJ, so she will be RJ's through and through. Um, so, yeah, her name is Doc's OSU Whiskey Gal, and I've just been calling her Whiskey. Um, she looks a lot like Star, she's built a lot like Star, so um, those two I think will, will go into training really well together. So, um, I think that's all we've got in the barn stalls. In mending fences, I went and picked up the fence post to finish the pig um, where we're cutting it off. The outdoor pen is for the pig by day and the dog by night. Um, it doesn't have one side of it because we're taking out that tree. And I got the hog panel and I've got the two posts. I just have to simply get it put all together. Um, once I get that done, I even have a gate. I have the stuff. I just need the guys to get with me and help me put it all in. <laughs> the wood is there, so that's kind of a problem, too. Um, we've piled all of our wood for the winter right there. But I should be able to fix it from the inside. Um, then, let's see. I bought the post to cut off the horse, the new horse pasture that we're doing. It is not a horse pasture. It's a horse run. And it's actually being made for um, Murphy. He needs something to get him through the winter. Um, there will be four horse runs out there and then a, a turnout that's got our horse stock in it. We've got to clean out that corner. We've got some fencing stuff over there that I'm going to move out and put in the equipment pen. Um, I think that's it. Well, I've got the, the little round thing that we put tin cans and stuff in that, that we dump once a year. So that will be out of there. But pretty much I just have to clean out the three piles of stuff. Um, and then I've got all the stuff, I think, to do the whole fence across there. And then I haven't gone and gotten the wood or the tin to do the stalls because um, it's been raining here. So uh, if I'm not going to be able to get out there and, and work on it, I don't want it in the way. So um, anyway. I'm going to get on that. I'm watching the weather, and as soon as it breaks, and as soon as I get my truck back, that's another thing is I'm having trouble going and getting supplies because I can't get hardly anything in the car. Um, Friday, we had to go and get, or I'm sorry, Thursday. We had to go. I ordered half a load of feed, which is only going to get us like a week. But Lee took his car and loaded down 500 pounds worth of feed in the back of this car between the trunk and the back seat. It was kind of funny, but it's not. But um, it, it's just, it is what it is. Um, my truck is in the shop. It should be repaired, but um, they had it tore apart. They were waiting to hear when the parts would come in. So, um, yeah. Uh, let's see, what else? In the yarn farm, I have one fleece tumbled. I don't have anything else done with it. I was going to wash it today and time got away from me and I got a bunch of other stuff done, but I didn't get it washed. I'm going to start um, washing it. I actually got 50 extra gallons of propane so that I could wash a bunch of um, fleeces. So yeah, and 50 gallons of propane will do quite a bit. Just saying. Um, then let's see what else. I think that's it. Today I went to, nah, that's personal, I guess. Well, next week isn't. Anyway, okay, so I am doing, I guess this would fall under, you know, in the yarn farm, the stuff for the farm that we do. Um, and that is Winter Wool Fest booth is paid for. I have a craft show on November 4th supporting the, you know, I do one craft show around Christmas time locally to support something. I think I did church last year. Year before that, I did a different church. Um, this year, it is November 4th, I think. And it is for the school choir and band. So, yes. They're the first one to ask me, so that's who I do. Um, I pay for a table. I don't expect to make a ton of money. It's nice when I do make a little bit, you know, especially since this one's going to be right before Christmas. Yeah, that'll be nice. Um, but other than that, 
it is what it is. Um, all right, in the fields, I've got, okay, the pig, I have a cut right here, and that's because that thing that she's growing, the gourd or the pumpkin, it, by, the stem, by definition, by the stem, it is a pumpkin. It's a bubbly pumpkin. And that plant has stickers all along the vine. And they get you, I'm telling you. We got squash bugs and half of them are dying, but part of it's still growing. So I'm leaving it until all the leaves die away and everything is done. But I went out there and started pulling up parts that were really, really dead. And it got me. It bit me. So there's that. Also, the loofah gourds, I'm leaving them on. I have some beautiful ones. I'll have to get some video of that tomorrow. But yes, I have some beautiful loofah gourds that are growing. Um, I've got to move the strawberries and stuff, but I haven't gotten it done. It is wet, and that's the perfect time to do it so that it doesn't put them in shock or anything. But I'm going to get out there, hopefully, in the next day or so if it's not raining. But I've got a lot of stuff I've got to get done. I need to work on my list for the winter. You know, we've closed for the season. We're open by appointment only now. I think I'm going to do a an evening on the farm. I don't know what that's going to entail. But pretty much just we'll do it. Kind of like fireflies and, and stargazing. But I don't know what we're going to do. I want to do something in the fall at night on the farm. But I don't know what. So if you guys have any ideas, please leave it in the comments below. Um, then, let's see, what else is going on? <laughs> in the farmhouse, I think, is about, RJ's looking at purchasing his first truck, and he's scared, as we all are. Um, he makes enough money to pay on his normal stuff, his roping, his, but he's never had to maintain a payment or a vehicle and he simply would go without, you know, if he didn't get enough money or find a horse to ride for that month, he just would go without. It's not like he works for me. So that's why his room is set up like a small apartment. And I take care of all of his utilities, including his Wi-Fi and his cell phone, um, water, gas, you know, food. Um, now he has a, what we call the bar in there and he's got drinks he's got a fridge um he doesn't have a microwave but he says it takes up too much room and we have one just right outside his door in the kitchen um so he uh kind of does that but other than that he's happy with it that way um he no longer works for kevin and he's got more time to rope we both got sick this week so he started it actually the lady that came to try precious started it. Her little girl was sick. She brought it to our house. RJ has a compromised immune system, so we gave it to him, and then he gave it to me. So, yeah. It is what it is. We were sick this week. Um, let's see. See, it's just a bunch of rambling. I think that's... Oh, I will tell you. I should have showed this earlier. Today, I went to my OHCE meeting. I won a little pack of five utensils that you use for canning. It was really cute. But, I got this and this is a card made by three of the classes that came to the fair and it's got their pictures in it doo, 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 and it labels their classes I don't want to get too close with that that's not you know people don't need to see their pictures but it's just got little printed pictures and it says holy cow we utterly love you and it says know what I K for which is our um, pre-kindergarten classes um, so I got that and that was, they loved the petting zoo. So, um, that was my big thing. Woohoo! I love that. Um, I've been working on lots of little things. This is just two that I'm going to show you. I did, oh, and here comes the train. So I may have to talk around it. Um, I did some amber beads for Willow Creek. Um, it'll stop now but the rumbling will still be going on um, I have the windows open because you know as you know we don't have central heat in here it is a very nice cool night and I've got fans in the windows and they'll blow 
anyway, I did, um, Willow Creek had some amber, some raw Baltic amber necklaces. And some of them needed to be repaired. Some of the beads were missing. So she sent them to me and I took all of them plus a few that I had and we multiplied them and we made one bracelet and three necklaces um, so that that way they've got them. Uh, they're very expensive and she only sent me three, bra three necklaces and one was a baby necklace and it was, you ended up with more spacers than you ended up with raw amber to make it long enough for a growing child's neck. Um, I also changed the clasp because they had some clasps that were really worn out and there was a twist on kind that was supposed to break apart. But once they break apart, twisting them back on is just not, they're plastic, so it's not perfect. Anyway, so I did hers with the little metal clasps. I love these clasps. If you ever get these metal clasps, these are they're, I use them on the farm because of breakaway, and if I get my necklace caught in something, um, I can just, it just it pulls away. But they're super, super strong. They, they don't pull away unless you pull on them. And sometimes they still don't pull away. Um, you have to get, like, if you're to pull here from the center, it breaks away. But just because you pull, and this one's heavier. This one is lighter, and I have more trouble breaking it away. So, but it's just a blue um, thing. And these were some of the beads that looked like the Baltic. And I was going to use them as spacers and make the babies into a little bit longer. And I had some wooden beads. But you ended up with less amber in it than spacer beads. And I didn't like that. So I talked them into let me make a bracelet. And uh, then, of course, they still end up because I had extra beads. I could shorten a few of them, steal a couple of theirs, put in spacers, oops, and uh, in the end make um, two of them had, no, three of them, I think, two of them had, I don't remember how many, I used Australian crystal, um, so it, they really looked beautiful. They, they, I should have, don't know if I have a picture, if I have a picture, it'll pop in right here okay so if you didn't see a picture that means I couldn't find it <laughs> um, but anyway so while I was doing that I played around and I ended up making this little cross um, it's just a rose and it's blue and white it goes great with jeans and then I made one that's a little bit showier it's the style of of jewelry that's going around right now huh? not for me though <laughs> it it's okay but I just I'm not into all the bling so here is the other one and this one will be up for sale it's got little rhinestone I'm trying to make that clear but it's it's got little stones and it shimmers and shines it's it's probably fake whatever I don't know but and it's really cute and Argy's like mom you know, these people go goo goo for this. It is a little bit heavier. It's got um, some rose quartz in it and some regular quartz. So it's it's balanced. But it too has the um, closure on it. Let me see here. There you go. And it lays like that. There you go. But it's just bigger and bulkier than I would wear but a lot of people do wear this style so um, I'm going to take these to the craft show and they will be for sale so this one is um, made of risin raisin however you say it fancy plastic what I'd say but anyway um, so they're for sale and I made those um, I also rethreaded the amber ones for them I've got these little things here I'm going to make stitch markers out of that came with one of the crosses. So, um, and then I have some more crosses that I don't know what I will be using them for, but they came with the one for the blue. And this is stuff that I just had on hand. Um, I finished up most of the stuff for the craft fair, that, and it's not till November. Next week, I have what's called um, Mary Mistletoe, which is um, the OHCE, Oklahoma 
home community educators um, is having a craft thing and I'm going to demonstrate how to make lotion bars. I just made like 30 little square samples to give away. Um, I'll put a little card with recipe and all that on it so that they have something to take away, something tangible. Uh, the 30th of October, I'm going to go to elder care and we're going to talk about how to use up extra milk by making cheese. Um, a lot of times elderly will buy a half gallon and then they don't use it all and it's going to expire. They could make them a little bit of cheese, you know, maybe a little half serving and it would use it up. And then they have um, the way to use for biscuits and that and that way it doesn't go to waste. So we're it, these people live on their own. Um, some are in assisted living, but not, um, what do you call it? Not nursing homes, not 24-hour care. They have some assistance, but they get to go out and do. So it, it's like an adult daycare. And so we'll be over there talking about how to use up cheese, how to use up milk into cheese, how to do it simply, effectively, and safely. Um, we will not be addressing raw milk but we will be addressing how to save money and not lose their milk they already purchased. Um, they also will address, um, I don't know where how it is across the country, but say in a homeland or save a lot or not so much in Walmart. I don't think I've ever seen it in Walmart, but a few days before the milk is going to go out um, it's going to expire they will slap a dollar off sticker on it and say hey and it just says hey look at me and it's um, save a dollar and what it is is that milk is going to expire so you can either take it home and freeze it um, which we all know doesn't work great or you can take it home use what you need out of it. I've had friends that divide it into a separate container and then use the rest of it to make cheese. So we're going to discuss how to do that. Um, just stuff like that. It, it's a little workshop. It's like a demonstration workshop, getting them talking about um, the dairy milk trucks that used to come around in the depression and um, good old stories. Stories my grandma told. She used to drive for elder care, so some of them actually might know her or remember her. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, pretty much I, I'm going to clean the house tonight. I got to put my laundry away. I know that's not very exciting, but I have to. Um, and then I'm pushing myself this next week to wash, 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 wash wool. Um, I want to get some done. I want to get some spun up. Um, just, you know. I just need to get some done because I don't have a whole lot in inventory. So, and I've got Winter Wool Fest coming in January. So, I've honestly thought about milling some more, but I'm really scared to send it to a mill. I know I have people that are out there that want to buy it, and I have boxed up twice now what it takes to make our yarn and our blend. And the last time we did, it nearly ruined us. So I, I'm really scared to use a mill. And uh, I'm going to do some. I just, i got to find a mill that I'm really comfortable with. And so far that hasn't happened. So we will see how that goes. Um, I still say I'm going to do it. I just, scared. It cost us a lot and nearly made us lose everything. So, um, yeah. And part of that is because we have made in Oklahoma products and we have to file the guidelines that we um, got approved with the state of Oklahoma. And if the mill doesn't, we get in big trouble. And we could lose our certification, everything. So, um, yeah. We just have to do it the way that it's supposed to be done. Shocker there, right? Um, which is the way we want it done. So, anyway. All right, I'm going to get off of here. RJ's at a rodeo. I've got to go put up my laundry. I think I've covered everything. Um, I'm going to get back to videoing every day and taking you out. I'm tired of just the sit and talk thing. So I'm going to try and take you guys out some more and get with it. 
But for now, I'm going to go put up my laundry. Big plans there. And clean up where I was sewing. Oh, I made, um, I call them mug rugs, but they're with the rice inside and some smell good. And you put your cup of coffee in there and there's a little pocket in there. And back to I made like eight sets of those too today. So, yep. Anyway, all right, I'm off of here. I'll see you guys later. Have a great night. I'm going to get to work.